function today we are going to start with the basic of functions okay basics of functions now today we are actually going to see that what is a function okay now see before starting the function i just want to tell you that see we have been dealing with lots of kinds of equation right like if i give you x equals to 2x minus 1 i can give you x plus y equals to 2 so we have different different kinds of equation right and we have different different variables that are there in the equation ultimately what it is some kind of relation only if i'm saying that x plus y equal to 2 so what is it representing that okay there would be some value of x and y and the combination will be in such a way that the sum will be equal to 2, right? So mm. there is a relation between the value of x and y such that the sum of the values of both the things, both the variables should be 2. So this is a kind of relation, okay? Now I can make infinite number of relation x square plus y square equal to 4 or you can make x square equals to y square minus 3, x plus y equals to 1 by 3. It can be anything, okay? So that is all about relation. But what actually function is, so if I simply tell you in terms of relation only so function is nothing but function is a special kind of relation now sir what special kind of relation basically i have just told you that relation can be of any type of it okay but the thing is that function is what a special kind of relation but what exactly a function is so function is nothing but what you need to see that we first of all let us see the notation of the function then we'll explore that what our function is we write the function in this term y equal to some expression of x okay it will be some expression of x okay or it can be like what fx equal to similar that is some expression of x Or sometimes they give you like this y equals to fx sir what is this fx like okay we can understand that okay y is nothing but the y coordinate we have also seen this x but what is this f of x okay so let us understand see f of do you remember the polynomials like okay you used to write p of x equals to 2x plus 1 or let's say g of x equals to x square minus 2x plus 3 remember these mm -hmm. are polynomials only so what is this p of x and g of x so they are nothing but the name of the polynomial p is simply denoting the name of the polynomial and p of x means what that okay this polynomial will be in terms of the variable x similarly g of x is again a what polynomial where g is the name of the polynomial and g is nothing but in terms of x so we are writing g of x that's why we read it as what g of x okay we read it as g of x so this is read as f of x so f is the name of the function and x is nothing but denoting that okay in terms of what variable we are having the function but again sir what exactly a function is so simply say that if i give you fx equals to 2x minus 1 this is some function okay so ultimately what i'm giving you some expression in x only right and just remember one more thing that y and fx both are one in the same thing that means what whatever the value of y and whatever the value of fx you get that is nothing but denoting the value of y okay value of y mm -hmm. okay now let us explore see within like 10 to 15 minutes you're going to get very much comfortable with the topic but just keep up the pace okay just keep up your focus here because then only you'll be okay getting comfortable with the function and if you have been comfortable with the definition of the function then we can actually proceed to the what more application of function and different different kinds of function okay now what exactly function is so let us write the definition of that directly just a second so what do we have so function is nothing but when we have a relation between x and y Relation means what? Some expression, some equation I'll give you like y equals to x plus 3, y equals to x square minus 2x. So that kind of relation I'm talking about, mathematical relation. Okay. So when we have a relation between x and y such that for 
each value of x each value of x you get a unique y then that relation is said to be a function noted down mm -hmm. and i'll explain you that okay what actually this definition is trying to say to us okay just note it down yeah. so when we have a relation between x and y such that for each value of x we are getting what a unique y and that relation is said to be what simply a function mm -hmm. Okay, now actually, what we want to say from what that what it exactly means that each value of x and what is unique y. See, let's say if I give you y equals to x square plus two. Okay, now if I put x equal to one, what value will I get for y? Um, what will you get? Uh, one but if i put x equal to minus 1 what value of y will i get 3 yes okay 3 right minus 1 square is again 1 and 1 plus 2 is again 3 now let's say if i have like this x square equals to let's say x plus um, 8 now, if you put x equal to 1, then what is, sorry. Yes, if you put x equal to 1, then what is the value of y you are going to get? Um, three. Not only 3, plus minus 3, right? Because y square will come out to be 9. Y mm -hmm. square will come out to be 9. So, that means y equal to plus minus 3. That means what? For value of x that is equal to 1, I am getting two values of y that is 3 and minus 3. Now see, what I told you that for each value of x, you should get a unique y. Now just remember, in the second example, we are getting two values of y for one value of x. Are we getting a unique value of for the x? No, we are getting two values of y for one value of x, yes or no? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so definitely what? This is not a function. Not a function. But... If you see here, okay, let me take one more example. Let's say y equals to x plus 3. If I put x equal to 1 here, I'll get y equal to 4. Now, here the thing is very simple that if I put x equal to 1, I'm getting y equal to 4. So, I'm getting what? Unique y for unique x. Okay, so this is a function. Is a function. But if we go for the first example, what was that? That was y equals to x square plus 2. So, for x equal to 1, I was getting what? 3. For x equal to minus 1 also, I, I was getting y equal to 3. Is the condition being satisfied here that for each value of x, are we getting the unique y? Yeah. How? Um, Read the definition. For each value of x, you get a unique y. Are we getting that? For x equal to 1, yeah. we are getting y equal to 3. And for x equal to minus 1 also, y equal to 3. Okay. So that is the catch here. That that uniqueness is should be what you need to see if, with respect to that value only okay basically what i'm trying to say here okay just imagine that okay x is x is a person and y is a person okay now y can cheat okay y can cheat means what y can play with 2x also basically what x for 1 we're getting y3 x for minus 1 also we're getting y equal to 3 and let's assume that 1 and minus 1 both are so full that they don't know each about each other. Okay, getting my point that for x equal to 1, I'm getting y equal to 3. Okay, so that is one pair. For x equal to minus 1 also, I'm getting y equal to 3. So for both 1 and minus 1, with respect to their own world, y equal to 3 is a unique value to them. Getting my point or not? Yeah. But in this position where, y, where x is 1, but it is being what? Related to two values of y. So definitely x is not having a unique y. So getting my point that okay for one value of x for more than value of x. I can get one y because you can see that in the third example I got one y for one x. But here in the first example I got same y for two values of x. Getting my point. 
so that is also acceptable and we say that it, it is a function why i'll give you a very basic logic that you need to apply every time what is that that try to think with respect to one value of x don't go for minus 1 if you are sitting at x equal to 1 for x equal to 1 you are getting y equal to 3 sort it when you came to x equal to minus 1 you have forgotten by about what x equal to 1 so again for x equal to minus 1 i am getting y equal to 3 so are we having unique value of y for each x yes or no Mm. Just try to imagine that for each value of x, we are having their little little worlds. Okay, worlds. Getting my point? Yeah. And just imagine that in the world of x equal to one, how many y are there? One y equal mm. to three. Yeah. For in the world of x equal to minus one, how many y are there? Only one. Again, y equal to three. Yeah. Now x equal to one and x equal to minus one don't know about each other's world. Getting my point? so yes. their y is unique to them getting my point mm -hmm. okay so that's why we are calling it to be a function okay so simple thing note down the definition note down these three example then we'll explore more and then you going to get more comfortable with the definition please note it down i'm giving you two minutes okay. see once you become so much comfortable with this topic once you okay got your hands in this topic trust me the whole maths okay of your sl is going to be too much easy for you okay so mm -hmm. just try to be very patient and very focused for this chapter particularly for this chapter i'll request you okay more and more because this chapter requires attention it requires some basic practice also okay on your own if you are not getting comfortable with this topic then the upcoming topics are trust me are going to be way more difficult mm -hmm. okay so i hope you are understanding the importance of this chapter trust me it is very important for hl students also and this goes for the sl students also okay so for yeah. this chapter if you have any doubt let's say even even if i explained you the thing and you are not still okay not getting the thing then please ask me to explain again okay mm -hmm. uh, i copied it down okay now let us move forward so now i'll give you the actual formal definition for what the function now what is it see a function is simply a correspondence basically mapping between two sets that is x and y in which each element of set x corresponds to or basically maps to exactly one element of set y okay so it is the same thing that i have just explained to you now they are talking in terms of set okay so let me draw let's say if i have a set x like this and there is one more set that is let's say set b so this is set a set x actually and this is set y now let's say if i have 1 2 3 4 5 5 elements in the set x and i have let's say 1 4 9 16 25 okay and let's say if i have minus 5 also and uh, minus 4 also now you can see that if i have the function of this form that is y equals to x square okay this is the function fx so what function is doing it is mapping the value of x or basically elements of the set x with the elements of the set y now if y equals to x square so should i map 1 with 1 2 mm, yeah. with 4 yeah because 2 square is 4 3 square is 9 then 4 square is 16 but also minus 4 square is 16 Similarly, five square is twenty-five and minus five square is twenty-five. So, is this a function? Yeah. Can you please tell me why? Because... Just try to say whatever you are having in your mind. Um. Because. Because you can see that. we are having unique y for each value of x minus yes. 4 is getting mapped with 16 so i told you that it 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 is not okay caring about 4 it's simply seeing that okay i'm getting what attach or i'm getting mapped with 16 okay so i have got my unique y getting my point similarly yes. 1 2 3 4 5 and minus 5 all are getting their unique y yes or no mm -hmm. if let's say if by chance if 2 was mapped to 9 also then i would not have said that it is a function because 2 is having two images or two mapping 
it is not having a unique mapping getting my point yeah so i hope now the concept of function is clear to you okay so note down this definition also and then this example also and one very basic thing remember that this set <clears throat> that is basically what all the values of x all the values of x are set to be domain are set to be domain or let me write it in more formally all the set of values all the set of values of x are set to be domain and similarly all the set of values of y all the set of values of y set to be range note down the whole thing that is written here okay 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 now the main task is that like the first question first type of questions that comes over the function x sorry function chapter is that to find domain and range okay so basically now we're going to move on to the topic that is domain and range of function so if you're talking about domain and range of the function okay so <clears throat> i just told you that if we have a function okay let's say fx equals to uh, 2x plus 1 okay now if i'm saying that for x equal to 1 2 3 4 what will be the y we are going to get for x equal to 1 it will be 3 for x equal to 2 2 into 2 plus 1 that is 5 for 3 it is going to be 7 and then 9 so you can see that these or four values are set to be the domain getting my point and yeah. these or four values are set to be the range so you can see that range is what dependent over the domain that whatever value you're going to give as an input that will decide that what output you're going to get. Okay. Yeah. So that is the point here. That domain is nothing but the set of values of X that we're putting in. And the outcome or the output that we're getting. Or the value that we're getting for the function. After putting the values that are coming from domain. Okay. So we call that output as to be was range. Got it? Yeah. Clear? Okay. Now, the point is that it is not that much simple, okay? Because the question will come to find the domain of the function. So, we should know some criteria to find the domain of the function. But, sir, why we are finding the domain? See, if I have a function fx equals to 2x plus 1. See, whatever value of x you are going to put here, it is not going to create any problem. Sir, why any problem will be created? Let's say if I have a function fx equals to 1 over x. Now, can you tell me any one value of x or any other or any value of x which can create problem here? That okay, sir, we should not put that value here for value. I'm talking about the value of x. Um, can we put x equal to 1 here? Mm. Yes, yeah. 1 will give us 1. Can we put x equal to 2 here? That will give me 1 by 2 output. Can we put x equal to minus 3? Yes, minus 1 by 3 can be some answer. Can I put x equal to 0 here? No. No, because for any rational function or any fraction, we know that denominator should not be 0. Okay, or we should know that any constant value by 0 is said to be what? Not defined in maths, right? So, sir, we should not put x equal to 0, else it will make the function not defined. Getting my point that, okay, how some values of x can create problem for the function? Yeah. Okay, so that's how we're going to find the condition that, okay, for what condition my function is not defined or for what condition my function is being defined. Getting the difference between defined and not defined. Not defined means that for what values of x my function is becoming unstable. For what values of x my function is becoming not defined? Getting the point? Yeah. Like here, domain will be what? Domain will be simply all real values. And we write it like this. See, this sign is nothing but a Greek symbol, Greek notation. And this simply means belongs to. Mm -hmm. 
and r represent what real numbers so we can put any real value of x root 2 negative root 2 100 by 99 minus 100 1000 10000 we can put 1 million 1 million it can be anything because no value of x is going to create any trouble here getting my point yeah okay but let us figure out some more functions where the finding the task of finding the domain will be more complex let's say if i give you fx over 1 by uh, x minus 1 so i can see that i can put any value of x here except what except when x minus 1 becomes 0 that means what x become 1 so x minus 1 should not be 0 that means x should not be 1 so my x can take my x can belong to all real values except what only that it should not take one got it yeah so that's how we write the domain this is the domain mm -hmm. have you noted down the previous example uh yeah but i'm noting down this now okay please keep noting it down and if you're, if you're not just tell me that i'll stop because these are important examples okay then only we are going to like proceed in the session because I'm going to give you some questions. Definitely, I want answers for them. Okay. Mm -hmm. For the next four or five sessions, please be patient and please give your whole focus. We are only having one session in a week and that too for one and a half hours. So I don't think that is a very big task, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. Now, if I give you, let's say, uh, 1 over x square minus 9. Now, I know that x can take any value, but x square minus 9 should not be 0, right? Mm -hmm. That means x square should not be 9. That means x should not be what? Um, three plus minus three. Yeah, plus minus three. So, so domain will be given by what? X can take all real values, sir, but it cannot take three and minus three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you tell me the domain of this function. <coughs> I'm giving you one and a half minute. So here we can see that two conditions can be applied. One is what? That x minus 2 should not be 0, sir. That means x should not be 2. But yes. from here, sir, x square minus 4 should not be 0 either. So x square should not be 4. So x should not be plus minus 2. So I can see that I need to take both the solutions, right? Because I don't want anywhere the denominator becomes 0. So what is the common part? In fact, what is the whole part? So I can see that this is already saying x not equal to 2 and this is already covering that. So mm -hmm. I'll say that x can take all real values except what 2 and minus 2. Got it? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. So? Um, x, E, R. X belongs to R. Mm -hmm. um. Then? I got three. Basically, we'll, we don't want x to take three. Well, so we are subtracting mm. what three then? Then three. Why three? Mm. Minus three. No, oh, yeah, minus three. Come on, you need to focus here. Yes, then. Then um five. Five or minus five also. Minus five, minus five. Okay. Now see that was about the denominator. Okay. Mm -hmm. But let's see if they give you function like this root over x. Okay. Now we know that from childhood only we can see that 
square roots are defined for positive values, right? So mm -hmm. here this will be defined for what? X greater than zero value. Mm -hmm. If we put a negative value here, it will make the imaginary output. Getting my point? So yeah. that's why we know that inside the square root, either you put zero or either you put what? The positive value. So X have to take greater than or equal to zero value. So if we go for domain, so domain is simply what? Do you know this uh, notation like okay, close zero to infinity, like interval notation? Yeah. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. So what does it mean? The highlighted one? Um, like zero or infinity? No, zero to infinity. Yeah. That means from zero, including zero, that's why I put the square bracket. If I have put up the what the open bracket, that means I'm excluding the zero. But yeah. I have put a square bracket, that means what? Including zero and going up till infinity. And on minus infinity and infinity, we always put the open brackets. Okay. Now, let's say if I give you root over x minus 2. So that means what? Here x minus 2 should be greater than or equal to zero, right? Yeah. That means x should be greater than or equal to 2. So mm -hmm. greater than or equal to 2, that means what? This is 0. This is 2. So greater than or equal to, that means including 2 and greater than 2. So the answer should be domain is given by x belongs to close 2 to infinity. Got it? Yeah. No. What will be domain for these two questions? Yes, I don't think it should take too much time. Yeah. Um, so it's um, so um, it's Five over what you did in this question, just tell me, like, okay, what <laughs> got into your mind to find the domain? If even if you okay were not able to understand anything, still be honest because I'm not going to move forward if you're not comfortable with finding the domain because this is the most important part of this chapter. So yeah. what what we need to do whenever we see some any function. To find the domain, only look for those conditions which can make function not defined. Now listen to my thing, okay, very carefully for the next two minutes. What I'm saying, you can also note down, okay, trust me, this is the crux I'm telling you. That to find the domain, always look for such conditions in the function which can make the function not defined. Mm -hmm. What I just said, we need to look out for the conditions which can make function not defined. Now, in the uh, part C, is 5 creating any problem to function? According yeah. to you, tell me yes or no. Yeah. Why yes? Um, it is simply sitting in the numerator. What it, what it can do to the function? Nothing. Oh, yeah, nothing. Function, function can have some problem if some condition occurs such that it value get hampers. Let's say if denominator becomes 0, if inside the square root it becomes negative, these are the drastic condition. These are some very typical condition for, for which my function can become not defined. Getting the point. Mm -hmm. 5 is a very small number. What it can do, right? Even mm -hmm. if I put 5 million there, it is not going to what? Do any problem. So what mm -hmm. can be the other problem that can happen to the function in the option, uh, part C? Um that this value 2x minus 6 should not be 0. Simple. Why are you thinking too much? Yeah. So from here 2x should not be equal to 6. So x should not be 3. Now, are we able to find any other condition? Mm. Yes no. or no? No. So x will be belong to all real except it should not take 3 value. That's mm -hmm. how we are telling you the domain. Similarly here. I can see that 
no problem can occur if my 3 minus x is greater than equal to 0. If my 3 minus x becomes negative, then it will create problem. So what is the thing that can make function very well defined? That is if 3 minus x is greater than equal to 0. That means what? 3 greater than equal to x. That means what? Basically x is less than equal to 3. Got it? Yeah. So if x is less than equal to 3, that means what? If I draw it on the number line, 3 is here. So less than equal to 3, that means from minus infinity. So should I write open minus infinity to 3 closed? Is this interval notation correct? Mm, yeah. That's how we have found the two domains of two questions. Okay. Note it down. Yeah. Okay, so now see how to write the function. Sometimes they write function like this also f going from x to y. So you remember we draw these diagram, this this diagram in which this was set x, this was set y, and function was just a mapping. So in mathematically formation, we write it like this: like f is a function. Okay, x is the domain and y is the range. So, like this. Okay, so this is one more way to represent it. Now, see, this is the function. Now, don't get confused with what, like, okay, what has been written here, h. Simply, simply mean that, okay, this is a function that is h and we have h of x equals to 1 over x minus 2, okay? This is the function. Now, what they're trying you to find? Domain and range. So, I simply want you to find the domain first, then we'll discuss the range part. Tell me what will be the domain. Um, half. Domain is set of values of x, Anna. It is not like simply one value of x. Again, I have given you the function. Just go forth and look for the condition, okay? Just see that what is the de demand of domain. Domain is simply demanding you to tell the values of x for which function is defined. So what is the condition that you can tell me which can make some trouble here? Uh, x minus 2. Should not be 0. So x should not be 2. Mm -hmm. So is there any other condition left? No. So that means what? x can take all real values mm -hmm. except 2. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So what do we have? Here we have the function. So first question is asking you to find the value of the function at different, different point. So I'll solve the first part. See, they're asking us f of 7, right? So what you do, you simply put x equal to 7 here. So what it will become? Root over 7 plus 4, that means root 11. So root 11 is your answer. It is not a perfect square, so I'm just keeping it this way only. So f of 7 is root 11. Similarly, calculate this and this. Then go for b and c also. Okay, let me see that. Okay, what you can do. Come on. Um, so the second one is six. Yes. 
The second one is six. Very good. And then... Third one? Um, it's zero. Yes, root over zero is zero. Good. Now, carefully examine that what question or what part B is asking. Solve that and then also for the C part, tell me the domain. Okay, come on. I'm giving you two, two, two and a half minutes. But please, the moment you see that again, that you're not able to think anymore, please tell me so that we can discuss. But please give your best, okay? That whatever we have discussed, that is very much well sufficient to give the answer for these two questions. Come on. Um, I'm not really sure. What you... See, what they're asking, we need to find the value of x for which f is undefined. Mm -hmm. That means what? When this thing can become undefined. Okay, just try to yeah. tell me that. I'm not asking you the mathematical answer. But still, as per your sense, okay, what do you think that, okay, sir, if that happens, then it can create problem or it can make the function not defined or undefined? Uh, zero. Uh, no. Zero is simply going to give you zero value. Mm -hmm. If inside the square root, the value becomes negative, it will make the function undefined. Simple as it is. Okay. Got it or not? If yeah. there are three possibilities for the values of x either i'll get x plus 4 positive either i'll get x plus 4 negative or either i'll get x plus 4 negative right anything can be three things only like either positive negative or zero so if x plus 4 become negative then will it make the function not defined yeah because if x plus 4 is negative that means i have to find the square root of negative and that i don't know that is undefined for me right now Got it? So yeah. for x plus 4 negative, the function is undefined. That means for x less than minus 4, the function is not defined. That means what? Minus 4 is this less than mean left hand side. So from minus infinity to minus 4. Close or open? Close. Why close? Am I, in am I including the value minus oh, 4? No, no, no. So open. Open. So this is the answer for the B part. But now they're asking domain. So domain is concerned with what? The values of X which makes the function well defined. So for that my X plus 4 should be greater than or equal to 0. So X should be greater than or equal to minus 4. That means minus 4 and all the values that are greater than. It. So domain is minus 4 to infinity. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now let us talk about range. See, for range again, you need to see that there are few types of function for which we need to know some basic condition. Like, let's say if I have any square quantity. It can be square of some number. It can be square of some variable. It can be square of anything. I'm simply talking in general about the square. Okay. Can square give me negative value? Um, if you take the square of anything, whether it be some variable or some number, can it give me the negative output? Yeah. How? No. No, no, I can't. Just, okay, don't say no. <laughs> okay, no. to say no, okay. Try to imagine that even if I have negative inside, so square makes it positive, right? Mm -hmm. If I take the square of minus 4, so it is minus 4 into minus 4, I can see that it is becoming plus. If I have 4, so it is becoming plus. Ultimately, what square gives me always positive output. Mm -hmm. Always gives us, give us positive output can it give us zero 
Yeah. How? If the inside thing is zero. Zero. Yeah. Right. So you can see that the if it is not giving us negative, if it is giving us positive, and it is also giving us zero. So can I say that square quantity is always greater than equal to zero? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So we are having any square quantity to be greater than or equal to zero. That means what? Let's say, let's say if I give you y equals to x square as a function, then you can see that domain is what? All real. Why? No condition is there which can make it undefined. See, you put negative, you put anything, you put zero. Is it going to create any problem to y? Y is simply x square, right? Yeah. See, with time, you're going to get comfortable with such condition that, okay, whenever you want to see the uh, fraction, you'll notice that, okay, denominator cannot be zero. If we see square root, so inside square root, it should not be negative. Okay, so don't just have patience. Now, if I talk about range, range is what? Can you tell me what, what is actually range? You have noted down the definition. Tell me what yeah. is range. Um, It's... It it's is like value of y. Y, yeah. Output, basically all the values that you are getting after putting the value of x. So, range will be what? I know that this x square is what? Always greater than or equal to 0, right? And x square equals to y. So, y is also greater than or equal to 0. Got it? So, what is the range? 0 to infinity. Note it down. Okay, now let's see if I give you the function to be y equals to x square plus 2. Then definitely it will bring some change to range. Why? We know something about x square. What is that? That x square can be greater than or equal to 0. Mm -hmm. So if I add 2 on both sides, so this will give me x square plus 2 greater than or equal to 2. Right? So mm -hmm. am I getting y greater than or equal to 2? Now don't say, don't yes to me. Okay, simply mm -hmm. understand what is happening here then tell me if you have understood it no, it or not x square we know about x square that okay sir whatever value of x you're going to put whether it be negative positive or zero it is always going to create the positive output but i can see that in function i'm not only having x square i'm having x square plus two right so mm -hmm. in x square plus two what we are having whatever the output x square is going to give me then the overall outcome, that is overall value of y will be what? If I add 2 to that. So, x square plus 2 will be greater than or equal to 2. So, yeah. x square plus 2 is y only. So, y is greater than or equal to 2. That means the range is what? 2 to infinity. Okay. Okay, let us see one more example. Then you note down both the examples. Let's say x square minus 5. Okay. Then, I know that x square is always greater than or equal to 0. But if I subtract 5 on both sides, so x square minus 5 will be greater than or equal to minus 5. So y is greater than or equal to minus 5. That means y is from minus 5 to infinity. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Note down both the examples. Yeah. Now, it can be like this also. Okay, they can mold it any way like 2x square plus 3 then x square we know that greater than or equal to 0 if i multiply with 2 on both sides so 2x square greater than or equal to 0 only so 2x mm. square plus 3 greater than or equal to 3 that means y greater than or equal to 3 so range is y from 3 to infinity i don't think that okay you are going to uh, simply do these steps every time. I hope now you are able to do it right away. That Okay, sir, I know that this thing is always greater than or equal to 0. So this thing overall will be greater than or equal to 3. Got it? Yeah. That is also do like, okay, in that way also we can do it. Okay. Now, tell me when you have noted this example now. Okay. Now, same thing, same thing we have regarding the square root also. What is that? That if I give you square root of x, try to imagine. 
square root of x is always greater than equal to zero. Basically, what square root of anything always give us positive or zero value only. It never gives us negative value. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if I give you let's say square root of x plus two. So square root of x plus two. So try to imagine that if I put x equal to zero, this will be root two. If I put x equal to one, y will be root three. So my y is keep increasing. Yeah. If I put x equal to let's say minus one, so y will be root one. That is one. If yeah. I put x equal to minus two, y will be root zero. That is zero. Mm -hmm. And if I put a value that is less than minus two, then will it create problem? Because then I'm having negative value inside. Yeah. So this is not in the domain. So you can see that minimum y is taking zero and then increasing. So it doesn't matter what you have inside the square root minimum value. It can take what zero or it will take value that is greater than zero. So always remember that if I have y equals to let's say root of any value or any expression of x, then the range is given by simply what y greater than equal to zero. Okay. Yeah. If you're not getting the feel of anything, you want me to explain it again, please ask me without any hesitation. Note it down. Okay, this question, three minutes. Now, I think you're able to solve ABC all parts. Okay, go for it. Yes or no? Yeah. Done? Uh, yeah. All the parts? Uh, with the first part, second part, yeah. So. I'm talking about ABC. Yeah. Done with ABC? Done with A and B. What is the answer for B? Uh, wait. Okay, just tell me for what condition you can, uh, you are able to think that H is going to be undefined. Uh, negative. That means negative, but what? Like what you're going to write? Um, X is less than zero. Why zero? X minus four is the expression. So mm -hmm. if I put X less than zero, let's say if I put X equals to minus one. Okay, then definitely x minus 4 will be negative because x minus 4 for x minus 1 will be minus 5. But even if I put x equal to 1, so 1 minus 4 again negative. Mm -hmm. So see the condition carefully. The whole expression should not be negative. x minus 4 should not be negative. So that means mm -hmm. what? x should not be less than 4. This is the condition for which what? The function is going to be undefined. Basically minus infinity to 4 if you plot it on the number line. Come on, Sarna. Yeah. Now we have done pretty much number of questions. Okay, now I don't want such mistakes. Come on. What what is the domain here? Um, don't give me answer. Just tell me that. Okay, for domain, sir, we need to do this. Just tell me that thing. Um. So for the domain, it's the x minus four should be greater than or equal to zero. For domain, go for defined condition. Okay. Mm -hmm. For domain, we need to look for condition for which my function is defined, well defined. Yeah. Right? So x minus 4 is sitting inside the square root. I want it to be positive or 0. So that's what I have written there mathematically. Mm -hmm. Now just simply we need to go for the conclusion. So x is greater than or equal to 4. That means what? 4 to infinity. That is the domain. Why it is taking like too much time? to sink in hmm? no. it is not that much tough trust me the things that we're going to uh, okay learn now from now onward are going to be tough mm -hmm. you just try to understand first okay don't simply go for questions you're not like okay I, I can see that you're not focusing on the concepts and trust me the time that you are not going to decide that you're okay, not going to focus on the concept you'll be struggling with this chapter and if you struggle with this chapter 
ट्रस्ट मी द अपकमिंग चैप्टर्स आर गोइंग टू बी वे मोर टफ सो दैट्स व्हाई आई एम जस्ट सेइंग दैट डोंट फील दैट दिस चैप्टर इज टफ जस्ट ट्राई टू बी लिटिल बिट मोर व्हाट डिवोटेड टुवर्ड्स व्हाट फोकसिंग ऑन द कांसेप्ट्स दैट्स इट नथिंग मच ओके एंड just be honest if you're not able to get the answer tell me i'll explain you 10 more examples for that that's why we are here just don't feel that okay if sir has given this sir has written so that means you are going to you are you will be able to understand that is definitely cannot happen every time okay yeah. so just be honest with that thing okay so here domain is this now if you go for range range is what simply y is what square root of x minus 4 now i have told you do you remember that any square quantity sorry any square root quantity is greater than equal to 0 right whatever expression you put here so range is greater than equal to 0 understood yeah okay Still, I want you to do two, three more questions because I don't feel that much confident. Okay, for the domain range here. Okay, just a second. I'll give you a few more questions. You have your GDC with you. You know how to graph the functions. Uh, I know how to graph it, but my GDC is dead right now. Okay, okay. Please, please, okay. Make sure that okay, you have it. with you yeah. in the from the next class okay okay find the domain for the first function that is the a part then not for the b part right now you are not able to do that just change the b part as remove the square root okay so just consider that it is 1 by x minus square minus 9 okay, okay. so consider this as a function then z <coughs> then consider the d as root over 5 minus 2x mm -hmm. and then e is as it is so you have five function try to find the domain first function is what i'll i'll note them down first function is fx equals to 1 by x minus 5 find the domain b is c is if you feel that okay you need my help in any question at any point even that is a beginning point don't worry don't hesitate in asking Okay, so we have five questions. Go for it. Um. Yes, first one not not able to do it. I think I got it. I'm not sure. So what is your answer first? Tell me then. <laughs> <laughs> See, rather than like okay, focusing on the complexity of the uh, okay the concept. i have told you what is that find the domain what you need to see check for the conditions which can make function not defined so mm -hmm. according to you what can be the trouble for the function that is given in the a part x minus 5 don't like okay. you are just telling me half part x minus 5 should not be zero tell me in that way yeah okay so sir x minus 5 should not be zero so now simply write it down So, sir, x minus five should not be zero. That means x should not be five, right? Mm -hmm. Is there any other condition that you are able to find mm -hmm. out? No. That means what? X can take all real values except five. Yeah. That's it. The domain is done. Yeah. yeah. Similarly, go for b part. Come on. Mm -hmm. Um, is it 
x x e yes. r see what we call it belongs to okay it belongs to yeah yes x belongs to x see belongs you, you can curse the greek notation as much as you can but yes. trust me the, till the last day okay the point where you're going to learn the math these things are not going to okay like what they are always going to be there the greek notation like alpha beta gamma epsilon okay so we cannot do anything because these are like basically convention so i'm just telling that okay this is belongs to so x belongs to r then um minus 3 See, we call it x belongs to R except three and minus three, mm. right? Why? Yeah. Because x is square minus nine should not be zero. So, sir, mm. x should not be plus minus three. Good. So, you are able to like tell me the domain now. Come on, go for C part, D part. Yes. Uh, can you just see? Yes. Yeah. Done? No, I'm confused about C. So what you are confused about tell me. Let us discuss. Um so it's like whatever yes, yes, tell me whatever you are having in your mind okay just tell me. Um it's like 2x minus 1 and then the denominator Yeah, is x plus two. Two x minus one is in numerator. Have we ever, okay, studied any condition over the numerator that can create trouble? No. Always it is about if even when we define the fraction, when you must have studied the number system in your grade seven, grade eight. P mm -hmm. by Q is a fraction, but Q cannot be zero. Here mm -hmm. also, two x minus one, whatever value of x you put, zero, negative. Ultimately, it will give me some real value, right? But yeah. x plus two is sitting in the denominator, so it can take any value, but it should not take zero. See, you need to talk to function that okay, what thing is making you uncomfortable? Okay, trust me, then it is going to make your what finding the domain process way too easy. So here, mm -hmm. x plus two should not be zero. This is the only condition that we are able to figure out. That mm -hmm. means x cannot be negative two. If x cannot be negative two, so the domain is r minus. Minus. Okay. okay. What about D? Square root. What is the thing about square root that we learned? Um, Inside square root, whatever expression is there, it should be. Positive. positive yeah. So five minus two x should be greater than equal to zero. Yeah. Use that condition. So five minus two x should be positive, or it can be zero also. Mm -hmm. So five greater than equal to two x, or five by two. Greater than equal to x, basically. X less than equal to five by two. Got it? Yeah. Are you getting how I have written this to this? Yeah. So x is less than five by two, and can be equal to it also. So x is from minus infinity to five by two. Close. This is your domain. Got it? Yeah. Then the last question, one by x minus four, e is f x equals to one by x minus four. Tell me what will be the domain? Yes. Um, Come on, this function is this yeah. chap. Uh, this question is way too easy. Just think of what value of x which can make the function not defined. Minus negative four. No. What Plus. is in the denominator? X. So, 
what value zero only yeah if you put zero it will become 1 by 0 minus 4 this thing is not defined yeah so whole thing will become not defined oh. so clearly even if you simplify it so this will become 1 minus 4x by x now mm -hmm. this thing will create no problem but we have x here in the denominator so x should not be zero so my domain is x is basically r minus 0 mm -hmm. got it yeah now in the school you have studied this chapter yeah but not like this okay so in school like okay what you covered um we covered like quadratic formula and stuff like that like um factorizing okay so you okay you know that okay how to solve yeah. quadratic factorization yeah. okay that's good that that's good okay because i thought that okay see this is the most basic part okay i don't know like okay uh, if you have studied the function why you are not knowing the domain right but mm -hmm. no problem that's why i dedicated the whole session to this part only now mm -hmm. your task is to what to revise the notes of the class i'm going to send you today okay these notes okay please mm -hmm. revise them at least two to three times and in the next class you should be ready with your doubts or you should be able to do all these questions okay i don't want that okay you have a blank face if i give you the same question again okay yeah. can ex can expect such things from you for this for this chapter only i have high expectation from the student always okay, okay. so just need to okay okay any doubt from your side no okay so see you next week till then take care beta bye okay bye bye